So maybe we are an attractive laboratory because of our peculiarly short lifespans at this time, which produces a rapid rate of mutation and adaptation of form and species and differentiation in evolution. Implants found under the skin in different parts of the body of the abducted are another interesting object of study. Our research is a little different in Houston. I have taken a proactive position in reference to the alien phenomena. Basically what that means is I'm not going to wait 200 years for the aliens to show up and do or say whatever they want to tell us. So what I've done is installed information within abductees that are getting picked up every eight weeks or so, people I'm comfortable with that this is happening. I install a post-hypnotic suggestion to the abductors from me. This is information that only they know, so therefore it would cause an alarm to them, in my opinion, if, it, if this works. I install amnesia so that the individual doesn't even know the information is there and so that the aliens can't pick it up. This happened on the 24th of November. A lady was picked up that night in Florida. She was one of our people. And in the middle of her abduction, as they're hauling her away, she looks over it. The post-hypnotic suggestion takes place. She literally wakes up out of her trance that they put her in, and she says, Daryl knows what you're doing. This apparently alarmed the tall, uh, uh, what they refer to sometimes as a brown alien, as he's standing there. He apparently told whoever sent him that information. They picked up all of our people on December the 8th in two states, in Florida and in Houston, Texas. Uh, a 44-page report was written by us about those events. All those people under regressive hypnosis described the same place, the same events, the same aliens. There were seven different aliens that showed up on that craft. They wanted to know one primary thing. The primary thing they wanted to know was how is he finding out this information? Why are you all gathering together? Why are you doing what you're doing? How did you able to find this out? The tall Nordic-type blonde alien that was in charge of this uh, with the other aliens chided the little small grays and the, and the browns for not following procedures. The, these abductees would never know what happened to them if you would use the anesthesia. You're traumatizing them and they're finding out how. You should never have done this. This is a picture, a larger picture, of course, of the eye implant in the mass abduction. This is the ocular implant that came out of the lady's eye that fell out of her eye. Uh, on December the 10th, the morning of December the 10th, when all these people were picked up in two states and their nasal and ocular implants removed. This is one that they forgot. This implant was examined by people at the University of Houston. It was determined not to be biological. It is not, a, it is, it is not an egg of an insect. It's not uh, a grain of sand. It's not anything like that. It was examined to have high levels of titanium and beryllium. The grays and the browns, believe it or not, are actually not that intelligent. They're quite sloppy. That's the reason we have so many physical implants and, and evidence from them. We also have a nasal implant. People talk about having uh, implants in people, but we actually have the implants out. We also have other implants uh, in people's uh, feet in two different cases that the, the doctors, medical doctors, have stated that there is no... Uh, that these were surgically installed and these people have never had a surgery apparently. This is a remarkable case. This is one of the first cases I worked for the Houston UFO Network. It's a case where a lady has multiple abductions and tremendous amounts of information. She is very phobic about her experiences, has been very greatly traumatized. She experiences past, uh, uh, past syndrome or something very similar to post-traumatic stress syndrome. In her feet, we found in this x-ray, uh, which is made in 1986 by an independent medical doctor, he notices three metal clips inside her feet. So the question is, how did these metal implants get in her feet? They're approximately a quarter inch long. There are three of them. The doctor says they were surgically installed. The same metal implants that were in this lady's foot, later we find out, are in the mother's feet as well. This is often, uh, this often occurs whenever uh, multiple abductions are taking place within a family. So the same implants are in the lady's foot. We find these out these particular metal implants in the mother's feet as well, just before she dies, uh, they do a medical workup on her and they find that they just happened to x-ray her everywhere and they, they x-rayed her feet and found the same metal implants in hers as well.
Although the abductions which have occurred in the United States have caused the biggest sensation, it's become evident that the same phenomena occur everywhere in the world, including Russia. After the opening of KGB files and other official sources, several cases of apparent hybridization experiments have emerged. Серьезен случай, он произошел в Сковской области, в районе поселка Акуловка. Женщина дважды утверждает, что она дважды беременела от пришельца, который являлся ей во сне, и дважды она разрешалась на четвертом или пятом месяце голубоватым, пищащим, волосатым яйцом. Мы туда посещали, простите, пожалуйста, мы туда направляли эксперта, полковника э, внутренней службы, который э, пытался установить э, достоверность этого случая. И вы знаете, в результате вот, э, его расследования мы постепенно склоним, приходим к мнению, что э, потерпевшая говорила правду. Тем более вот на э, симпозиуме в Альбукерке в прошлом году, где я был, там был поставлен специальный доклад американским врачом по НИЛам, где расследуется порядка 150 таких случаев. A special institute has been established in Kazakhstan, in former Soviet Central Asia, which prepares people for encounters with alien civilizations. The latest so-called fifth-degree contacts of the institute's research group took place in November 1992. Мне хотелось бы описать несколько событий, которые происходили в том эксперименте при установлении этих законов связи. Надо сказать, что на связь с экспедицией, которая работала на высоте 4000 метров в Тиньшане, в горном районе Акширак, инопланетяне, условное название, конечно, выходили почти каждый день. Это зафиксировано на фотопленке, это зафиксировано на слайдах, и это зафиксировано также на ролике, видеокассета. В течение двух минут, там, где работала группа, неожиданно э, мы поняли, что наш вызов принят, и к этому месту приближается Уфа. Перед этим мы послали своего оператора э, примерно в километр от точки, где создавалась вот эта парапсихологическая схема, где работал коллектив для связи с иными сферами сознания. И он запечатлел тот самый момент связи и контакта с представителями иной сферы сознания, который прилетел в виде шара. Ну, это, конечно, надо увидеть. Вот на пленке это изображено очень хорошо. В течение двух минут этот шар зависал, двигался над группой, менял свою форму, менял освещение, менял габариты. И в конце концов случилось так, что когда оператор наконец понял, что он снимает, с ним случился небольшой стресс. Его стало колотить, и он не мог уже камеру держать в руках. Он вынужден был прекратить съемку. При исследовании законов связи с иными сферами сознания очень часто мы сталкиваемся с таким фактом, что неопознанные летающие объекты, УФА, зависают над местами высокой тектонической деятельности, которая наблюдается в Тиньшане повсеместно. Так вот, когда Земля испытывает сотрясение 6 или 7 баллов, как правило, всегда э, землетрясение сопровождается э, контролем этих неопознанных летающих объектов над регионом землетрясения. Сейчас среднеазиатская коллегия пытается выяснить, что же в данном случае происходит. Либо эти уфа провоцируют землетрясение, либо наоборот, она каким-то образом влияет на эту деятельность тектоническую с таким расчетом, чтобы либо как-то ее снизить, либо перевести в другое место. A global program aimed at fifth-degree contacts has been started in the New World, too. Leading researchers working in the Gulf Breeze area of Florida have obtained very convincing evidence that at least five civilizations have visited Earth. Their aim in 1995 is to establish direct contact with extraterrestrial visitors. Back in uh, March of um, last year, 
I was with a group of 39 people sitting on the beach in Pensacola, or Pensacola Beach, just south of Gulf Breeze. We got up, started drawing. Dr. Stephen Greer was leading this group of the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, drew triangles in the sky with a very powerful spotlight, and three UFOs showed up right where he was making the triangles. Some of them interacted or reacted to his flashing of the spotlight. And uh, then they moved away and kind of faded off, and two more appeared, and we kept trying to get them to come toward us. And they did come eight-tenths of a mile closer to us. They were seen by three different groups of the Gulf Breeze research team. There was another group in the... Uh, Del Champs parking lot on 98. The UFOs first appeared right in the middle between the three groups. We have actual reports during that period of uh, 10 minutes or so, 10 or 12 minutes, from seven different locations, 52 witnesses, all signed written statements. It was a well-investigated, interesting, close encounter of the fifth kind. That is a human-initiated encounter with some alien vehicles. I can relate an experience, if you would like to uh, know about it, from earlier this year in February, where a senior research team that CSETI has assembled was uh, activated and sent to Mexico. And over the past year and a half, we have succeeded on a number of occasions of establishing contact with extraterrestrial spacecraft. On more than one occasion, huge extraterrestrial spacecraft at point-blank range within 300 feet altitude. And these spacecraft <clears throat> were much larger than a 747. We estimate anywhere from three to four times the diameter and size of a 747. They were perfectly triangular with a light at each apex and a red one in the center. And they came in in a landing approach mode on February 1st, 1993, signaling to the team back and forth. At a distance, you know, there is film footage of these craft at a distance, but when it was very close, all cameras failed. Every electronic device on the site failed, which was very distressing to us because we wished to get this on film. Luckily, we had five scientists there and researchers who have been able to give their a testimony to this event. And from what that event demonstrated. To go from there to a landing would have been one more minute. And I think that it is just a matter of time until our teams are successful in doing that. In the 12-month period from February 1992 until February 1993, we had uh, no fewer than half a dozen very close-range, interactive, what we call a close encounter, the fifth kind event. And this is what we uh, have termed these. This is where humans intentionally establish contact with the spacecraft, and they answer back. So it's human-initiated or human-cooperative. This is a very different thing than just being out someplace and having one fly by, and you happen to see it. I think there is a transformation taking place on this planet, not only of the human species, but of the planet itself. I suspect that the end result of this transformation is probably what Jesus described as heaven on earth. However, if you think about that seriously, that entails the end of the human experience on planet earth. That is a frightening idea to many people, especially people who are not capable of understanding what's going on. And I think that's one reason why our governments have maintained a policy of secrecy on this. Nobody in any government, any elected government, can afford to face the media on the issues. I find that, that higher intelligences are involved in educating members of our government also. There is a... Um, a document that's been released to certain UF, well-placed UFO investigators recently that, that I call the WRI 
document. It's apparently a, uh, a result of a sociological study that the Majestic 12 group uh, had contracted for with the Warwick Research Institute which is associated with the University of Warwick in England. It's uh, several paragraphs explaining how the, the, essentially the covert educational program is progressing, how it's affecting society, and how it might be speeded up at the present time. The worst thing that the, would happen would be to bring this information out in a way that would panic society and which could cause um, people to lose hope for the future. And I think that we have to be responsible in what we are saying and doing. And this is a very key point to this second phase of the CSETI project, is that our intentions to brief world leadership and to brief the world are to do it in a way that are non-harmful to the consciousness of humanity. I think it is safer to say that we are being visited that there's no evidence that they have hostile intentions, none whatsoever. And that, therefore, it is our responsibility to reach out to them and to try to establish an open contact <clears throat> so that we can really learn why they are here, how we may assist them if, if their desires are consonant with human evolution, and to keep the speculation to a minimum because, as a very famous man once said, I think we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Keskeisellä alueella universumia on eräs tärkeä planeetta nimeltään Tsenos. Se on tärkeä monestakin syystä. Ensinnäkin muut, hyvin monet muut sivilisaatiot ulkoavaruudessa pyytävät senoslaisilta apua aina tarvitessaan. Neuvoja ja, ja muita tietoja. Muun muassa sirjuslaiset ovat aikoinaan lähteneet senokselta, eli he ovat sukulaiskansoja. Senos on tällainen violetti planeetta väriltään. Ja minulla on ilo muistaa eräs matka heidän mukanaan. Siitä on pari vuotta aikaa, kun oli kevät talvi, tai oikeastaan oli vielä talvi, kun eräänä yönä minä heräsin siihen, että makuhuoneeni ikkunoista, joita minulla on kolmeen ilman suuntaan, tuli ikkunasta toisensa perään mahtavat värit. Ja kello oli vartin yli kaksi yöllä, kun minä sängyssäni istuin sydän pompottaen. Joku oli herättänyt minut. Mä katselin tätä ilotulitusta ja ajattelin, että mitä ihmettä tämä mahtaa olla. Jälkeenpäin minulle selvisi, että juuri sinä yönä minä olin ollut matkalla heidän mukanaan Tsenoksella saakka. Contacts with humanoids have been made all over the world, bringing to the people involved various parapsychic skills, such as telepathy and clairvoyance. Nämä asiat, mistä minä kerron, ovat kenties vaikea uskoa. Minä olen kanava, joka olen ottamassa näitä tietoja vastaan ja välitän niitä teille. Minä olen syntynyt tähän elämään juuri sitä varten, että päätee elämän tehtäväni on tiedon välitys. Kertoa niin henkimaailman taholta kuin ulkoavaruuden olennoilta tietoa meille ihmiskunnalle. En ole ainoa. Muitakin on ympäri maailmaa tällä hetkellä inkarnoituneena tällaisia henkilöitä, joiden elämäntehtävä on sama. Minulla on kerrottu myös ihmiskuntaa koettelevista tulevaisuuden tapahtumista. Ensimmäisiä niistä muistaakseni on valtavan pyrstötähden tai kometan sivuaminen maapalloa. Se tulee hyvin, hyvin lähelle ja siitä irtoaa, tai se räjähtää hyvin lähellä maapalloa. Ja siitä lentää suuri kappale Suomeen, lähellä suurta asutustaajamaa. Ja sen koostumus tulee herättämään tiedemiehissä tavattomasti kiinnostusta. Tämä, ymmärtääkseni tämä komeetta ei aiheuta mitään, mitään täällä katastrofia. On kerrottu myös tällaista valtavasta suurkatastrofista, 
joka tulee koskettamaan koko meidän maapalloa. Meidän akselimme tulee kallistumaan muutaman asteen tämän hetken näkymien mukaan. Ja se aiheuttaa valtavaa tuhoa maapallolla. Meret siirtyvät ja peittävät alle valtavia alueita. Se aiheuttaa myös mannerlaattojen liikkumista, tulivuoren purkauksia ja, ja valtavia ilmastollisia muutoksia. Tämä, tämän jälkeen ihmiskunta ei ole enää samanlainen. Ja tähän kaikkeen todennäköisesti ei kulu enää kymmentäkään vuotta. Ja tavallaan se on jo kaikki alkanut. Kun tämä suurkatastrofi tulee ajankohtaiseksi, niin meidän avuksemme tulee valtavia määriä ulkoavaruuden olentoja. He tulevat ikään kuin evakuoimaan meitä täältä. Minulla ei ole kovin paljon siitä tietoa, mutta tiedän, että, että me saamme apua. Ja se kaikki tulee ulkoavaruuden muilta älyllisiltä olennoilta. The precise number of alleged abductions is uncertain. One of the earliest studies of abductions validated a total of 1,700 claims, while contested surveys argued that 5 to 6 percent of the general population alleged to have been abducted. Although abduction and other UFO-related reports are usually made by adults, sometimes young children report similar experiences. These child reports often feature very specific details in common with reports of abduction made by adults, including the circumstances, narrative, entities, and aftermaths of the alleged occurrences. Often young abductees have family members who have reported having abduction experiences. Family involvement in the military or residence near a military base is also very common among child abduction claimants. One has to logically ask themselves, with so many variables involved with abduction cases, it's undeniable how many physical pieces of evidence have been submitted by the claimants many of which have never uh, met a of pictures, and are located uh, in other to, parts uh, the of object the on the uh, television screens that um, that is part of the uh, C-arm apparatus. Uh, this may be a little hard to see, uh, but there is an object uh, right here. And uh, that's the, uh, the object that we removed. Uh, Here is uh, some actual uh, surgery going on. This is uh, material which uh, has uh, blood on it and a few pieces of the specimen. Here's the specimen uh, container. It uh, contains uh, blood serum and uh, has a bit of the sample on it. Now, um, we'll just diverge for a moment. What we like to do is we uh, like to check as many things as possible. And this case was so interesting, I couldn't help but want to present you this material, which is the first time anybody is ever uh, hearing this. The, uh, you're going to get a lot of information which you've never heard before. This is the first time a breakthrough. So uh, I, I just hope you realize how lucky you are to uh, be a, a part of this. A client's home is a single-story dwelling. Its uh, exterior uh, construction is a plaster over a ch chicken wire and, uh, and uh, uh, the you know, usual type of wrap wrapping. The interior is uh, plaster over wallboard. Uh, there are, there's a number of uh, magnetic anomalies we found. The exterior of the master bedroom wall uh, above and below, but mainly below the window, showed some uh, magnetic uh, properties. A backyard soil uh, was uh, highly magnetic uh, with a large magnetic field exceeding 10 milligauss. And the soil also spontaneously catches fire. Uh, we took samples and had some soil analysis done and found that the soil has an extremely high bromine content. Uh, there he had a, a fiberglass boat that was in the driveway 
and uh, the fiberglass was also highly magnetic, which uh, I don't know how that can happen. Uh, there was anomalies also of a Cadillac automobile uh, that the individual drives. The interior of the house had numerous magnetic anomalies. All the utensils in the kitchen drawers, including things that absolutely should not be magnetic, such as the, you know those uh, wooden uh, salad serving uh, forks and spoons and other utensils that were either plastic or uh, made of wood. They are not supposed to be magnetic. Uh, they were the kitchen cover the hinges were highly magnetic and some of them contained uh, only one pole of the magnet. Uh, unipoles are not supposed to exist, but uh, evidently they do. Uh, the non-metallic kitchen counters also were magnetic. The interior uh, master bedroom uh, wall, uh, again around the windows and confluent areas which we found on the outside, was also magnetic. Uh, I hope you can see this. This is a drawing of the house and it indicates uh, areas of a large amount of magnetism. There was a uh, avocado tree that was growing in the backyard and we set the gauss meter on a limb of the avocado tree and it pegged the gauss meter at 10 milligauss. Now if you've ever seen <coughs> excuse me, an, a, an avocado tree that was magnetic, please get in touch with me at once. Uh, I would hate to eat the fruit off of that tree and have it stick to the metallic buttons on my shirt or something like that. Uh, have a taco. They wouldn't want to make guacamole out of that, I think. All right, now in addition to this, we were able to uh, dim the lights uh, in the bedroom and using uh, three different frequencies of ultraviolet light, we found, again, this is the first time, so enjoy it. It's for real. Here's a picture of it. I hope you can see it. We found two small childlike handprints on the wall which were phosphorescing and they only have four fingers. I don't, I don't have any friends that have four fingers that I know of. Here's another one. Look, look carefully. We've got, uh, we've got this now. We, we took out the piece of the wall and we're going to uh, get try and get DNA off of this. There's a new device that's been uh, invented and uh, it's a tape. And you can put the tape uh, over something that you're trying to get DNA uh, and you peel the tape off and you can send this tape into a laboratory and you can get the DNA. So we're very uh, interested in seeing what the outcome. But just the photograph alone which occurs uh, in a house where abductions are be have been going on, and then you find two four-fingered small handprints on the wall, I think is a pretty interesting finding. Uh, 48 hours, here's another uh, weirdo, 48 hours after the surgical uh, specimen was placed in a sealed container, I uh, went to check on it. All the little pieces uh, that uh, we had taken out, I told you the object break, broke into a number of fragments, all the little pieces became a darker color. And they not only became a darker color, but when you lifted up the specimen container, they began to rearrange themselves in the order of which we saw in the x-ray. Now, uh, I, I called the cameraman and we had him uh, come down and immediately take a video of that. Never seen anything like that before. We're uh, working on possible explanations uh, why this happened. Okay, now this is going to be video, I think. If I can find the cursor. There we go, there we go. This should work. There we go. Okay, get ready. I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut up. Watch the surgery. If you feel bad, like that you'll find a bag in the seat in front of you, pocket, pull it out, you'll know what to do.
turned it back on, that piece was no longer visible. Engine for a minute will slow down, bleeding. Where did it go? What it's happened? Coming out of here, so it's not. We don't have a Try to do it for a different position. We'll just hold it like it this. It was not there. We did not remove it. My fingers were off. Mm. That was terrible. Someone 
is done, some entity or something looks like they're using a meteoric iron mixed with some other rare elements to uh, make uh, a, an object, to put together an object with a specific function. Now, um, in addition, there are uh, a number of things that uh, we, we found. Um, I told you about the nickel-iron ratio. We found some minor elements in the sample. Some of them are listed here. Um, these are very strange elements to um, find in uh, somebody's foot. Uh, you just usually don't find these uh, sort of things. Now, in addition to this, uh, we have uh, testing which shows that there's biological uh, material which is either growing out from the metal or into the metal. Uh, we don't know yet, but we're doing more uh, testing and more data. Uh, this is uh, mind-blowing enough, uh, especially uh, when you look at the last one here, which is uh, uranium and uh, the only isotope of uranium that uh, was found was uh, U-238, which is uh, very difficult uh, to find in nature existing by itself. So in, in total, uh, what we have here is something that's, uh, that's most, most unusual. Uh, this is not the end of the science, but I wanted to uh, present this material uh, to 